verse number 18 down to 20. And unto the angel of the church in Thyatira, write this thing, saith the Son of God, who has his lies like unto a flame of fire, and his feet are like fine brass, and know your works, a charity, which means love, and service, faith, and thy patience, and thy works to be uh, the last to be more than the first. Notwithstanding, I have a few things against thee, because thou sufferest that woman Jezebel, which calleth herself a prophet, is to teach and to seduce my servants, to commit fornication, and to eat things sacrificed unto idols. We shall also go unto Second Kings 9, verse number 22. When you have it, say amen. And it came to pass, when Joram saw Jehu, then he said, Is it peace, Jehu? And he answered, What peace so long as the whoredoms of thy mother Jezebel, and how witchcrafts are so many? Everybody read it again, if you will. And we shall also go to the book of Nahum, chapter 3, verse number 4. Nahum 3, 4. Thank you, Jesus. The Bible says, because of the multitude of the whoredoms of the well-favored harlot, the mistress of witchcrafts that selleth nations through her whoredoms and families through her witchcrafts. The Bible does not say witchcraft, but witchcrafts. Amen. Somebody say amen. Hallelujah. I'm going to discuss this afternoon in just a few minutes, if you will, from the subject, the mistress of witchcraft. Somebody said the mistress of witchcraft. Come on, say it again, the mistress of witchcraft. Let's pray. Father, we thank you for this awesome opportunity that you have granted unto us to come again in this thine house for none other reason but to exclusively magnify, extol, lift up, and exalt your holy name, the name of Jesus Christ, the name given among all men whereby we must be saved. I pray that now, Lord, let that name become powerful again in this place and in our lives. Let that name speak for the redemption of we, your people, for the redemptive purpose of the cross of Jesus Christ. Let that name, O oh God, redeem us from uh, curses and spells and yokes and diabolical influences. Let that name, O oh God, bring us back again and reconcile us before the throne of God the Father unto the love of God Almighty. My God, we thank you that now this your word, which is incorruptible, that now it is the bread of life whereby men shall not live upon bread alone, the physical, the natural bread alone, but upon every word that cometh forth out of the mouth of the living God. Speak unto us a word, oh God, teach us your word. Open the eyes and ears of our spirit men, enlightening us into the riches of the revelation of your word. And I pray that we shall all come unto the unity of the body of Christ, oh God, every joint supplied, oh, the whole body knit together, oh my God, and we shall grow unto the fullness of the stature of the measure of Christ. We give you praise, glory, and honor in Jesus' mighty name. Somebody shout amen. And you may take your seats in the presence of the living God. Mm. Uh, as uh, you notice uh, in Scripture, we happen to read from Second Kings chapter 9, and uh, this is a Scripture not many people are familiar with, yet many of us have been familiar unto what we define nowadays the spirit of Jezebel. But I want you to understand Jezebel is not just a spirit. Jezebel is a principality, and if you will, we are going to be able to understand that a whole lot more. Elijah has been sent by the voice of God. The first time we see Elijah coming into Israel was 1 Kings chapter number 17. There had been so much wickedness in the land, so much uh, debauchery, so much uh, evil happening in the land. A whole lot of things had been happening. And if you read the previous chapter, which was chapter number 16, you will see from verse number 30, 31, 32 through 34 of chapter number 16 that, uh, uh, that uh, Omri did more wickedness wickedness in the sight of God more than all those who were before him. And then Omri was the father of Ahab. Ahab went on, the Bible says, as though it had been a trivial thing, which is a light thing or something to be taken for granted for him to walk in the sins of Jeroboam, the son of Nebat, that he took to wife Jezebel, the daughter of Ethbal, and went and served Baal. And Jezebel came into Israel. Jezebel found her way into the house of God. Understand in this 
scripture, Israel is significant of the church of the living God. How the principality, not just a spirit, but the principality of Jezebel has crept into the church unawares. The Bible says in the book of uh, uh, Jude chapter 1, verse number 3, verse number 4, that how they crept in unawares. How did they come in? You know, they crept in unawares. In other words, unnoticed. Nobody detected them coming in. Jezebel had been born unto Ethbel, uh, excuse me, unto, uh, uh, yes, unto, unto, unto Ethbel, who was a king of the Zidonians, and uh, they were serving Baal. Baal was their god that they used to worship and they used to serve. And the Bible says Ahab goes outside of the borders of Israel, outside of the commandment of the living God, to go and marry a woman from another nation. Yet the Lord had spoken unto them, you shall never intermarry with other nations. Because when you bring them into my house, into my land, they shall seduce you uh, to worship their gods. They shall seduce you to do things I forbid you from doing. Wherefore, never go outside. Hallelujah. What was God talking about? God was trying to prevent the Israelites from committing sin against him. And God was trying to preserve his anger from being poured, poured, uh, poured out upon the Israelites. And the Bible says, uh, Jezebel came into their house of God, uh, into Israel, if you will, and Ahab built a temple of Baal in Samaria, and Ahab reared up an altar, or built up an altar for Baal in the temple of Baal he had built in Samaria. The Bible says, I believe in verse number 33 over 1 Kings 16, that in those days a hail of Bethel did what? He went and built Jericho in his days. Amen. Now, uh, verse number 34, let's go, uh, uh, we shall read it together and understand it. In his days, a hile of uh, the Bethelite built Jericho. He laid the foundation thereof in Abiram, his firstborn, and set up the gates thereof in his youngest son, Segub, according to the word of the Lord, which is spake by his servant Joshua, the son of Nun. Remember Joshua, chapter number 6, I believe, verse number 24, how Joshua decreed the word of God, that cursed be any man before the Lord, who shall ever rise up to build Jericho. He shall lay the foundation foundation in his firstborn and the gets thereof in his lastborn. And here we have the, full, the fulfillment of the scripture coming into manifestation or into fruition, if you will. But the Bible says in his days, in whose days? In the days of Ahab, because Jezebel had come into Israel. Wherefore, in the days of Ahab, when Jezebel was in Israel, when Jezebel was in the house of God, when Jezebel had brought her idols in the temple of the living God, it, it was okay for other kings to do human sacrifices. It was in the days of Ahab, excuse me, the days of Ahab that actually legal human sacrifices were, were become constitutional. It became okay. It, just like now, gay marriages were legalized in America. But it was in the days of Barack Obama. Yes, and I know some people are watching by the internet and this may be on YouTube tomorrow. But guess what? Let me preach the word of God as he put it upon my heart. In the days of Barack Obama, it became a legal law uh, for a man to marry a fellow man. For a woman to marry a fellow woman. Hallelujah. And then they go and spend two weeks on their honeymoon. After a priest of God has joined them together, yet the Bible says a man shall leave his father and mother. But now a man has left his father and another man has left his father. And the two have been joined together. Not joined together physically, but also sexually, also spiritually. And now, whereby kings also signify that kings are gates. That now Barack Obama opened up a gate to the principality of, uh, of uh, gayism or homosexuality in America. And here we are praying for our children not to go into this kind of wickedness yet one leader opened the gate and allowed demons to come into our land and we are wrestling with principalities that is why be careful whom you vote into power ladies and gentlemen be careful now here in the days of Ahab it became legal for other kings as well to sacrifice people to sacrifice their sons and daughters it became okay it became constitutional hallelujah think about now you have on those two chairs a man sitting with another man amen and maybe a priest as a, a priest is about to uh, marry them and then he says now may you kiss your bride and then a man takes his ugly lips puts them on top of the other lips of somebody else this is wickedness ladies and gentlemen and i believe this demon has got to get out of our nation has got to get out of our families has got to lose our churches somebody shout amen 
Come on, somebody shout amen. Uh, somebody out there may not appreciate what I'm talking about, but excuse me, let me do my mission because I know on that day I shall account for every anointing God put upon my life. Wherefore, can we do this thing, ladies and gentlemen? Can we just do this thing, amen? Somebody shout amen. Wherefore, in the days of Ahab, it became legal, ladies and gentlemen, for, for parents to sacrifice their children. Remember in 2 Kings chapter number 3, verse number 27, the king of Moab also took his own son, his own son who was supposed to reign in his stead, put him up on the wall as a burnt offering, sacrificed him because it was okay, because Ahab had legalized it. And now other nations were copying what Israel was doing. Even the Moabites began to copy what Israel was doing because Jezebel had brought her idolatry into the house of God. Uh, 1 Kings chapter 21 verse number 25. The Bible says uh, that, uh, uh, that uh, there was nobody as, as wicked as Ahab who sold himself to do wickedness in the sight of the living God because his wife Jezebel stirred him up. Ahab became so wicked before the sight of God because because behind him was the principality called Ahab, excuse me, called Jezebel. And Jezebel manipulated the house of God. She manipulated the system. She began to control everything. Ladies and gentlemen, this is a principality, not just a spirit. Because if you are a spirit, a spirit can be bound and the spirit can go and the man says, I bind you. But let me break it down for you. Elijah dealt with the principality of Jezebel for 16 years and a half. Before Elijah went to heaven, he had been in ministry for 16 years and a half. I've done scripture, I've done biblical study, I've done theological education, I've noticed uh, in scripture that Elijah walked in the prophetic ministry for 16 years and a half. He, for 16 years he wrestled with this principality and even the principality had the power to drive Elijah, a powerful prophet, out of Israel. 1 Kings 19 verse number 1, the Bible says, and, Je and, Je and Ahab told Jezebel all that Elijah had done and withal, how he had killed the prophets of God with a sword. And verse number 2, Jezebel sent a messenger unto, a unto Elijah saying, may the gods do to me and more also if I make not your life as the life of one of them by this time tomorrow. The Bible says then Elijah ran for his life. Elijah ran for his life. Think about Jezebel, one woman, to chase a mighty prophet of God out of the nation of Israel. This principality has killed the prophetic voices. This is the principality that even subdues leaders. Ahab was subdued by Ahab. When you notice pastors are being subdued by a spirit, and some people want to control a pastor, what he preaches and what he does not preach on the platform, understand behind that work is a spirit called Jezebel. Somebody said Jezebel has got to get out of the church. Yeah, 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 yeah. Ahab gave way for Jezebel, and Jezebel came into Israel. Jezebel manipulated the work of the living God. She controlled the king, and the king was just like a button that, Je that Jezebel used to push, right? like a push button. And you just go do what you need to do because Jezebel has spoken the word, and Ahab had no control. Ahab lost his kingdom, he lost everything because this spirit of Jezebel had driven him to do that. If you've lost your authority as a man, that means Jezebel is working on you. Men, you need to rise up and get back your authority, whether it be the authority over your house household as a head of their household or whether it be the authority over your wife or whether it be the authority over your children. Man of God, if you're subdued by a woman, guess what? That is Jezebel at work. Can the men say amen? I know some of you don't want to hear this, but let me preach this word because the blessing of God comes from the top flowing down. If you're a woman and you are out of order, you need to put your legs back in line. Can the church say amen? Uh, you, you don't, you're, you're not going to like me today. Hallelujah. But I came to preach this word. If you are out of order, the Bible says let everything be done decently and in order. For God is not the author of confusion, but of peace as in all the churches. Wherefore, we need to do everything decently and in order. The Bible says Christ is the head of the church, but the man is the head of the woman, not the woman the head of the man. Can I bring this thing back in order? Ladies and gentlemen, wherefore, we need to rise up as true saints of God, whether a man or whether a woman. There is a role we all have to do. Men, rise up back to your position. You cannot be just like Ahab, manipulated and controlled. That means you've lost your manhood. Manhood, I don't, I, I'm not only talking about sexually. I'm talking about also your manhood, your authority as a man. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. 
I'm talking about your authority as a man. You cannot be subdued. For example, when God gave the earth, the garden of Eden, he gave it unto Adam. He did not give it unto Eve. He gave it unto Adam. But why did Eve control Adam to the extent that we are all having death coming into humanity because the man listened unto his wife? And if you notice the scripture, Genesis 3, verse number somewhere, I forget. But the Bible says, and because you, Adam, you are hearkened unto the voice of your wife more than my word. Cursed is the ground for your sake. There are some things which are cursed because, men, we've lost our authority that we need to come back. Some our homes are cursed. Some businesses are cursed. Some churches are cursed because, because we are hearkened unto the wrong voice. The spirit of Jezebel, it may be in a land. It may be in a territory. It may be in a system. It may be in a church. It may be anywhere, even in the environment. And this is what I'm talking about, the mistress of... Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Most of us are so naive and we are minuscule in our understanding that when we talk about Jezebel, we think about seductions and uh, sexuality. No. Jezebel is a whole lot more than that. The Bible calls her the mistress of witchcraft uh, who selleth nations and families through her horadoms, uh, her witchcrafts and her hollow trees. Uh, that means that witchcrafts, not just one word witchcraft, but it is plural. Witchcraft means our witchcrafts are so many. There is, there, is, there is black magic, there is voodoo, there is necromancy. There is a whole lot. Those are all witchcrafts. And uh, there is idolatry. There is rebellion. That is another form of witchcraft. When you have people who are rebellious toward authority, toward the godly authority, maybe as a husband, as a parent, as a pastor, as a leaders in our ministerial teams and responsibility. That is Jezebel at work. And we all need to come back in order. And that is how Jezebel has crept into the church and awares and controlled even the men who are supposed to be men of God. They can no longer pray. They can no longer execute their responsibilities as God gave them the charge. Wherefore God said unto Adam, Adam, why did you hearken unto the voice of thy wife? Trust me, there are some things, yes, you need to hearken unto the voice of your wife, but there are some things, ladies and gentlemen, that God, you know the word, and you cannot allow anything else to drive you out of the world because God gave you charge over the garden. God gave you charge over the home. God gave you charge over the responsibility or a ministry or a child or a home or a vision whatever it may be that God gave you responsibility over you need to rise up and take your place I said you're not gonna like me today can the church say amen my God, I sense the anointing to rebuke this devil out of here. Ladies and gentlemen, God has said in his word that where for Adam, why did you hearken? Look at how all this mischief, all this evil has befallen all humanity because of one man that God has to come down in the flesh to die for us because one man hearkened unto the wrong spirit. Women, what voice are you listening to? Men, what voice are you listening to? Remember, Eve had hearkened unto the voice of a serpent. There are some people, your friends, who are whispering to you now, Pastor Bella, this is how you should do the conference. This is how you should handle the women of solution. No, I didn't get the vision from you, but God gave me the vision. My God, can I speak this word? There are some things that God gave you word over. Remember why Saul was rejected as the first king over Israel was because he had hearkened unto the people. The pastor, the man of God, you hearken unto the voice of God and you deliver the direction of God unto the people and the people follow the direction of God through the men of God versus listening to the men to the people and then you go back and execute the wrong thing. The Bible says that Saul the people pushed him and pushed him and then he also hearkened unto the voice of the people. Yet when Samuel was sending Saul to go and kill the Amalekites he said unto Saul, Saul the Lord said unto you, I chose you when you are a nobody. I anointed you when you are a nobody. Now I brought you to, to do to do this thing, to execute my judgments upon my people and, and every nation which I chose where for Saul arise and go to the Amalekites when Saul spoke when Samuel spoke unto Saul the other people were not there there were some visions that God spoke unto you in the secrecy of your prayer closet when you were talking to God and he gave you the vision so nobody has the audacity to direct you otherwise when God said this that is why the Bible says the kingdom has been torn away from you Saul and God has found a man who is after he 
his own heart. Not a man who is after the heart of men. Not a man who is after sex, after money, or after fame. Hallelujah. Now these people are after everything else. And they're not after the heart of the living God. God is in the business of raising up a new generation. A new breed of Christians who are after the heart of the living God. People who are going to download the glory of God. Don't care about no money. Don't care about no fame. I may have no title, but as long as I bring back the glory of the living God. When David became king over Israel, the first thing he did was to bring back the Ark of the Covenant, which had been taken out of Israel. In the 40 years, Saul was king over Israel. I never see Saul attempting to bring the Ark of the Covenant. But yet David has only been a king for just a few years. And he says, now I cannot sit and rest before the glory comes back in Israel. Who am I talking to in this place? Who am I preaching to in this house? Ladies and gentlemen, wherefore we need to hearken. Come back to the foundation. Come back to the fundamentals of Christianity. Come back to the original call. Uh, the Bible says you have left your first love. And because you've left your first love, I shall take the lampstand away from you or the candlestick away from you. Remember from whence thou art fallen. You used to pray this much. You used to be this much. You used to be a warrior. You used to come upon the altars and call upon the name of the living God. What I happened to you? Ask your neighbor, neighbor, what happened to you? Ah, uh, yeah, yeah. Come on, ask somebody, neighbor, what happened to you? Yeah, 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 yeah. Some of you are meant to be warriors. Some of you are meant to fight with beasts. Some of you, God ordained you to wrestle with principalities and devils and rulers of darkness of this age. Some of you, God appointed you and he anointed you that you wake up at three o'clock in the morning and wrestle with the beasts over your territory. But some of us were still sleeping even by five o'clock. You're still in your bed. You're still on the phone. Seven hours on the phone, but you can't pray 15 hours a day. God have mercy. We need to rebuke this devil out of the church and bring the church back to the original call of Jesus Christ. Somebody shout amen. I believe God is calling somebody back and if you need increase, increase does not come by you, by you sending out WhatsApp messages. Increase does not come by you making so many fires. Increase comes back when we come back in the presence of God. The church of the, the original church, the early church, the Bible says when the Holy Ghost came down on the day of Pentecost, 5,000 souls. I said 5,000, not 5,000 people but 5,000 souls were added unto the church that very day in just one day when the glory of God came upon the church when the glory can come back upon the church remember God does not build his name his church upon somebody's name upon somebody's reputation upon somebody's anything else God builds his church upon his own name that's why he says unto Peter that thou art Peter and upon this rock meaning upon you Cephas your name used to be this in John chapter 1 verse number 42 but the Lord named him another name, which by translation means a rock. And now he says, upon this rock, upon my name, I have transferred unto you. Am I going to build my church? That is why sometimes God shall mess up your everything you know how. He shall mess up your name because he does not want to build his church on your name. People can talk about you, can ridicule you, but they can wonder how you increase because the church is not on my name. The church is on the, oh God, it is on the name of Jesus Christ. And they wonder how can they talk so much about this man, but it increases yet more and more because the church is not built on my name or my reputation. I am I am a nobody. Without the Holy Ghost, I am nothing. There is no Pastor David without Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. There is no man or woman of God in this place without the Lord himself. Wherefore he says, upon this rock will I build my church and the gates of hell. They shall not prevail against it. I don't care who the president is. He may open up the gates of hell. Uh, to bring in idolatry uh, to bring in homosexuality but the gates of hell shall not prevail against you because the, the church is standing upon me Jesus uh, my God somebody shout hallelujah Somebody shout hallelujah. And now we see Jezebel has brought her halotries and her witchcraft sender. This is the spirit of control and manipulation. It has controlled all the king and all the elders of the house of Israel. The house of Israel has the Sanhedrin, which is the 70 elders of the house of Israel. Some of you have read in scripture and you saw the council, the word the council, which is also meaning the Sanhedrin, which also means the 70 elders of Israel. Hallelujah. Remember the scripture when the Lord said, if somebody 
and somebody says unto you, unto you thou fool, then they shall face the, 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 the wrath of the council. He was talking about the wrath of the elders gathered together. But when Jezebel came in town, one woman controlled the king. She controlled the 70 elders of the house of Israel, killed all the prophets of God in Israel, then built her altars uh, in, all over Jerusalem, all over Israel. And in the, in the place of the prophets, she made her own self-proclaimed prophets. And they began to prophesy right. They began to see right in the spirit. They began to deal with things which are really real. But what makes a false prophet prophet false is not that they decree what is right or wrong, but it is the source of their prophecy. It is the source where, from where they draw their revelations. Hallelujah. And you can have true prophets of God. Yes, they can prophesy amiss, but that does not make them false. It simply means they need to mature in the gift of God. Amen. Because I've seen prophets truly called of God, but they prophesied amiss. Why? Because not because God spoke uh, the, uh, uh, the wrong word, but because maybe they, they needed to mature in the gift of God. Remember, in the revelations of God, there is what we call the revelation, there is the, the, the interpretation, and there is the application. Revelation is what you see. Interpretation is how you interpret what you've seen. And application is how you act upon what you have been interpreted. For example, if you see a serpent walking in here with a face like Pastor David, and some of you will be like, Pastor David is a devil. Hallelujah. And then look at how you begin sending errors to the man of God, killing him. Fire, fire, fire. Hallelujah. Somebody shout amen. So how you interpret will matter how you apply, you know, how, you, how you act upon it. But here we have a scenario that Jezebel has come in Israel. She's done so much wickedness that even by the time Elijah comes in Israel, that means things had gone so wrong before the house of God. Everything was out of order. It took Obadiah, who was a priest, was not even a prophet of God. The Bible says, uh, I think it was First Kings 18, verse number 3, verse number 2, verse number 3. Now Obadiah, verse number three. Now Obadiah feared the Lord greatly, for so it was, because he feared the Lord greatly that he did what he hid the prophets of God. When Jezebel, for so it was when Jezebel cut off the prophets of the Lord, that Obadiah uh, uh, took under hundred and he hid them by fifties in a cave and fed them. Hallelujah. But verse number three, the Bible says, he feared God greatly. Because he feared God greatly, what is the sign that you fear the Lord? What is the sign that you, you acknowledge? the reverence of God what is, because some of us we say we fear God but then we do everything we still want to do but Obadiah feared the Lord greatly and notice the, 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 uh, the um there is a colon, which means now this is what he did next. He feared the Lord greatly, and because he feared the Lord greatly, he hid a hundred prophets of God by fifties in a cave. That means they were priests. These are elders of the house of God, whom the Lord has appointed over ministries to shelter the young men and the young women who are raising up, so that Jezebel, the principality, shall not slay them or kill them before they mature in the things of God. For example, the Sunday school. This is the next generation. We are passing on the baton unto them and they're going to become the next pastors, the next prophets, the next men and the women of God who are going to bring revival in America and change our, our the course of this universe. But this is the next generation. Some of you have got to learn how to pass on the baton because you're not going to be here forever. Trust me, honey. You ain't going to be here forever. A time is coming whereby you need to go. Hallelujah. And your body shall go back to the ground. Like it or not, believe it or not. From the dust you came, from the dust thou shall return. Amen. Let the church say amen. Hallelujah. And because wickedness has increased in the house of God, guess what? Now Elijah prays, Lord, I pray, let me die for I am no better than my fathers. And the Bible says God sent an angel to strengthen Elijah. And the angel said unto Elijah, no, you're praying right now to die, to quit the ministry, to quit the house of God, to quit the call of God. Many of you are on the verge of giving up. You've been serving for such a long time. You, you gave your, your all unto God you've been disappointed Jezebel fights you until you feel so frustrated until you feel so unappreciated until you feel like everything you're doing is worthless and you feel like let me die 
That's the work of Jezebel. There are people who used to pray, can no longer pray. There are people who used to serve God diligently, can no longer serve God diligently. Galatians 6 verse number 9, the Bible says, Be not weary in doing good, for in this season thou shalt reap if you do one. If you faint not, the word faint not means to pass out. Many of you have passed out in your Christianity. You passed out a long time ago. You need to be resuscitated. But the reason you passed out was because Jezebel has been pushing up buttons and uh, you've been crying and crying. Don't even know how to do. Don't even know how, how to go to move anymore. Somebody shout, I, am, I shall not die. Come on, somebody shout, I, I shall not die. Come on, somebody shout, I shall not die. My God, somebody shout, I refuse to die. Tell a neighbor, neighbor, you shall not die. Somebody shout amen. Mm, 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 mm. God of mercy. Ladies and gentlemen, we see here in scripture that now Jezebel is in the land and Elijah is praying, Lord, let me die. Elijah wants to die. Elijah wants to give up. Yes, after doing so many works of God, he has called down fire from heaven. Think about such a prophet of God, the very first prophet of God in history, who stood in the power of the anointing of God and said, If I be a man of God, let fire come down from the heaven and consume thee. Visible fire, literal physical fire came down from heaven to prove that Elijah was a man of God. Elijah had the accompaniment of the divine confirming everything he does but Jezebel has the power to drive this man of God out of town Jezebel has driven some people out of the church this principality has fought. It is a beast. No wonder the Lord put upon my heart the territorial beast. These are beasts that we don't know we are dealing with. They are working different ways. The Bible says, uh, lest the devil should gain advantage of us, for we are not ignorant of his devices. Uh, 2 Corinthians 2.11, I believe. Hallelujah. Lest the devil should gain advantage of us, for we are not ignorant of his devices or his schemes. Uh, how does he fight? Sometimes he shall offend a brother, offend a sister, and then you shall feel like the pastor is talking about you. You feel so unappreciated. Everything I do goes unappreciated. The pastor never recognizes what I do. And then you get your legs out of the church where the Lord called you. Elijah is walking out of ministry. Elijah prays, Lord, let me die. Have you been like Elijah? You pray, Lord, let me die. Jeremiah prayed in Jeremiah 15, Lord, let me die. Jeremiah was a mighty prophet of God, but so much, so much things were said about Jeremiah until he felt like, no, I can't do this anymore. I am done with the prophesying. I'm done, I'm done with the ministry. I need to quit this work of God. I, am, I can't do this anymore. Some of you are on the verge of giving up. Some of you have lost your zeal and father to come to church anymore. Some of you don't want to serve God anymore because Jezebel has driven you out of your calling. My God, Lord have mercy. And Elijah began to wrestle with this principality. Elijah in all his power, who called down fire from heaven. Elijah in all his anointing, he executed the 850 prophets of Baal and Asherah on the mountain called Kamo. Elijah could not take down Jezebel because Jezebel was on a higher level. Jezebel was on and he kills 850 prophets, but he can't kill one woman. Now you know how many demons were in Jezebel. She, she's an agent of hell. Hallelujah. And the Bible says, uh, Revelation 2 verse number 18, And to the angel of the church of Thyatira, write these things. The Lord knows what you're doing. He knows how you love God. He knows your labor. He knows your charity, your work, your love. He knows all of that. Nevertheless, notwithstanding in verse number 20, I have a few things against you because thou sufferest that woman Jezebel. That means you are allow, you tolerate. When the Bible says in verse number 18, and to the angel of the church of Thyatira, and to the pastor of the church of Woban, when God gives you a territory, you have the power to drive out every unclean spirit and every diabolical altar from that region. Hallelujah. Because the Lord gave you charge over the territory. And the Bible says, as to the angel of the church of Thyatira, because I gave you this land, I gave you this territory, this is a jurisdiction. How can you allow? How can you suffer Jezebel? The Bible says, thou shalt not suffer a witch to leave, but you have allowed witchcraft to prevail in your city. You have allowed the harlotries and the mistress of witchcraft to do her, her, her wickedness in your territory. How can you allow that to take place in your church? 
Now let me break it down for you. For example, how can you allow a 12 year old child like Michelle to come back at home at 2 a.m. in the morning yet you are the head of their household? Trust me, you lost your authority a long time ago. If she can come back at 2 o'clock in the morning and you never say a word, that means you lost your authority a long time ago. As long as Michelle, my daughter, you're under my house, you shall do what I say because it is my house and I am your father. Somebody shout amen. Somebody shout amen. Sometimes you got to put your foot down and say, hey, devil, this means war. This is my jurisdiction. This is my territory. God gave me a woman. If God gave me a woman, no witch can live in my territory. Somebody shout hallelujah. So God is saying, now, you angel, I have this against you because you have allowed Jezebel. I don't know if you get what I'm saying. You've allowed Jezebel. I gave you the territory of Thyatira, but you have allowed Jezebel to go around opening up false churches and teaching false doctrines to people. If you read that scripture, you understand what I'm saying. Notwithstanding this, I have a few things. Verse number 20, what does it say about verse number 20? Notwithstanding, I have a few things against thee, because thou sufferest that woman Jezebel, which calleth herself a prophetess, to teach God, and to seduce, to seduce my servants, to commit fornication, and to eat things, sacrifice unto idols. Every time a false church opens up in your region, God will hold you responsible. Every time false prophets come in your land, God will hold you responsible. That means God requires of you to rise up above their level. When Elijah came into Israel, Elijah, 1 Kings chapter number 18, Elijah did a prophetic demonstration and Elijah said, how long shall you falter between two opinions? If the Lord be God, serve him. Or if Baal be God, then serve him. And Elijah said, give us two bullocks, hallelujah. And, uh, and we shall call and we shall put them upon the altar and we call upon the names of our gods. The God that answers by fire, let him be God. These were 850 prophets of Baal and Asherah. They stood. They did their enchantments. They did their wickedness. They began to cut themselves. They began to do blood sacrifices. But because Elijah was there, their enchantments could not work. You didn't get what I said. You didn't get what I said. When a higher power comes in the land, it automatically binds and oh, you didn't get what I said. That's why the Bible says when you come into a territory, you need to first bind the strong man, then you shall be able to plunder his goods. So when Pastor David comes in woman, hallelujah, what he needs to do it is to first destroy every other altar. You're all quiet. That's why, church, we need to raise up and pray more than ever. We cannot allow Jezebel to control us and to manipulate the house of God. Anymore. Elijah had to freeze their powers. Elijah's presence froze the powers of the, of the prophets of Baal. Elijah stood and they began to call upon Baal and they said, Oh, Baal, answer us. And Elijah said, Maybe he went on a vacation. He is a God. Call louder. Maybe he's sleeping. But Elijah knew, I have frozen your powers. No matter what you do, you cannot operate in under my jurisdiction. Let me teach you something, ladies and gentlemen. When a spirit of divination operates in a land, and you're a true man of God, you can bind that spirit, and you can refuse it from operating anymore. In the book of the Acts of the Apostles, chapter number 16, there is a, 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 little, a, a little girl. She began to proclaim unto the people of Israel uh, by, by divination, hallelujah, saying, Paul and Silas, these are men of God that proclaim unto us the way of life, hallelujah. Listen ye unto them. They, what they spoke was right. What they spoke was true. What they spoke was authentic. What they spoke, hallelujah, was, was real, hallelujah. Somebody shout amen. What they spoke was really real. What she spoke was okay, hallelujah. But the source was wrong. The Bible says this girl did this for three long days until Paul, until Paul was vexed. To vex means until, until Paul became tired. Until Paul, he, 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 he could no longer take it in anymore. How how can divination follow you everywhere you go? How can divination do this? And the Bible says, Paul said, turn unto the girl, I rebuke you, come out of her. You found a spirit of divination. And immediately, uh, the devil came out of the girl, and the girl was cured. What did Paul do? Paul took authority in that territory, hallelujah, and he froze the spirit of divination. You can go in a land and false prophets can, can no longer see in the spirit. 
you didn't get what I said. Elijah came. Elijah stood upon upon Mount Carmel and he said, now I freeze all the altars of these false prophets and they could no longer see in the spirit. Hallelujah. Because when God gives you a territory that is your jurisdiction, nevertheless, I have a few things against you because you have allowed Jezebel in your territory. You have allowed Jezebel. Jezebel is witchcraft. Jezebel is adulteries. Jezebel is fornications. Jezebel is sexual sin. Jezebel is false doctrines going around in wrong churches. Hallelujah. Jezebel is the occult as well. The Bible calls her the mistress. That means she sits on top of all. A mistress, that means she's a queen. Everybody's under their con under her control. She controls magic. She controls witchcrafts. She controls sorceries. You're quiet. She controls all these things. They all account unto her. They all are accountable unto her. They all give a report unto Jezebel. It's because she's a mistress. The Bible says the well-favored hallowed of, of witchcraft, which selleth nations with her witchcrafts and her whoredoms. The Bible says, 2 Kings chapter 9, verse number 22, and, and, and Jehu said, Joram said unto Jehu, are you, are you, is, is it peace, Jehu? Is it peace, Jehu? Jehu said, what peace? So long as the whoredoms of your mother Jezebel and her witchcraft are so many. Every time there is witchcraft, there is no peace in your home, no peace in your finances. Let me break it down for you. If you're having relationships and you keep on falling apart and fighting and fighting, that means there is no peace. It is a work of witchcraft. You didn't get what I said. What peace so long as... Oh, can I preach this word? I said, can I preach this word? We need God to open up our eyes because we're sick and tired of this devil controlling our homes. What peace so long as the whoredoms of your mother Jezebel and her witchcrafts are so many. When the church breaks up there is, because there is no peace, people living and people fighting. We are supposed to be brothers and sisters in Christ. Hallelujah. But what happened to us? And we began fighting one another, backstabbing one another, persecuting one another, talking about one, what happened unto us that is a work of witchcraft what peace so long as the whoredoms of your mother Jezebel and her witchcraft are so many ladies and gentlemen uh, Jehu thought it was peace uh, but Jehu had no idea the foundation was, so, was sorcery and witchcraft uh, my God this foundation was sorcery and witchcraft uh, and until Jezebel is dead there shall be no peace until Jezebel leaves their house of God uh, their house will keep on dividing one after another uh, and uh, as, long, as long as Jezebel or oh, witchcraft is still operating on you no matter no matter how many boyfriends you get, they shall keep on leaving you. You're quiet. Can I preach this word? I say, can I preach this word? Because you wonder, how come every man I get, he cheats on me. Every man I get, he fights me. Every man I get, he slaps me. It's not about a man being abusive. It's about a, a spirit, a principality called Jezebel. What peace? So long as the whoredoms of your mother Jezebel and her witchcrafts are so many. Tell somebody in the name of Jesus, we drive out the mistress of witchcraft. Come on, tell somebody in the name of Jesus, by the anointing of God. As, uh, uh, no, 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 no. Do, do, do we have ears? I say, find you somebody and tell them in the name of Jesus. Now, if your neighbor is still by themselves, there's something wrong with their ears. You need to slap that ear open. Hallelujah. Damn. Say, in the name of Jesus, we drive that spirit of Jezebel out of town in the name of Jesus. My God, my God, my God, my God. What peace so long as the whoredoms of your mother Jezebel. Hallelujah. And you wonder, how can people exchange somebody else's blessings, somebody else's virtues? What peace so long as the whoredoms of your mother Jezebel are still so many. The Bible says Jezebel exchanged the glory of the living God into, into an open shame. She exchanged the, the two prophetic for the counterfeit. She killed the prophets of God. What witchcraft does, it shall kill. 
the true prophets of God, it shall kill the true blessings of God. It shall kill your true blessings and they shall put upon you something that you should never be having, that you should never have had. Some of you should be so far away by now. So by now as I'm speaking, some of you maybe would have been already married, having like 20 kids already. Hallelujah. But you're still so single with your single self. Amen. Because of the mistress of witchcraft. Today we are dealing with this devil. This devil has got to leave. Hallelujah. Remataka Sire. If you're fighting in your home, your mama beating you, daddy beating you, father beating you, wife slapping you, my husband cheating on you, that is the work of Jezebel. Hallelujah. You are quiet. Can I preach this word? Can I, can I preach this word? Jezebel has been in the church for such a long time. It is time for Jezebel to leave. I don't care where Jezebel may be standing, whether in the house of God or in the government or in the political arena, whether in the foundations, Jezebel has got to go. Somebody said, Jezebel, leave our homes. Somebody said, Jezebel, leave our churches. In the name of Jesus Christ, this devil is so wicked. It divides people who used to call each other, each other sweet love, honey pie, amen, sugar pie, amen. Now the sugar pie has turned into a cat and a dog, amen. The sugar pie has turned into a beast, amen. What happened? Because of the mistress of oh God. Find you, find your partner and tell him, honey, 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 I still love you. Can I preach this word? <laughs> My God. Jezebel has, the Bible says she sells families. Nahum 3 verse number 4. She sells families. Sells nations number 1 and then families. Some nations like Uganda, you go to Uganda, the roads are so poor. And you think this is normal? That's not normal. That is the work of witchcraft. A witch can bewitch a city until even infrastructure refuses to go in a territory. That's not normal. The Bible says, uh -huh, because of the multitude of the whoredoms of the well-favored are hallowed, the mistress of witchcraft, that does what? Nations, nations should be, Uganda, for example, specifically, should be so far away. How can a nation like Rwanda be so far advanced than Uganda? How can a nation like Burundi, so, be, they are so small and they have no, no, no income. They have nothing at all compared to Uganda. Uganda has a whole lot, but what's wrong with Uganda? Jezebel, witchcraft has controlled the country so much that even whoever wants to, to build infrastructure, they end up putting the money in their pockets to enrich their bellies and to get bigger pockets. Hallelujah. Yet the whole nation is dying because Jezebel has sold our nations. Jezebel has sold our families as well. And you wonder some, now imagine Elder Katumba for your daughter to reach 55 and she's still single. Now you see what I'm talking about, amen? Because if it is somebody else, it is okay. But, it, but if it comes to your own blood, you see what I'm saying right now, huh? So imagine your own child. Yeah, you pray, you fasted. But now they are clocking 65. They are still single. No man has ever said you look beautiful. Your own daughter. God, this has got to leave our homes. Our families have been sold through witchcraft. This is because of the work of Jezebel. You go to, to nations and some nations like Zimbabwe. So, so you, Zimbabwe has so many, many minerals in the ground. Congo has a lot of minerals in the ground. As a matter of fact, Congo is counted as one of the richest countries on earth in form of minerals. But if you reach Congo, Congo is so poor, it is so remote. America does not have what Congo has. But America is so far away. Amer when America began, they took care of the foundation of witchcraft. The witchcraft you see now came in much later on. But when America started out, there was the America that we know started out well. Hallelujah. So Jezebel has sold our nations, sold our destinies. The people that should be now maybe having well paying jobs, somebody else is sitting in your office. The vineyard of Naboth. Then, then Ahab comes and takes the vineyard of Naboth. This was his own territory, his own inheritance. But look, through Jezebel, through witchcraft, Naboth is killed and Ahab comes and takes the vineyard. Some of you, you've lost your vineyards. You've lost your land. You've lost your resources. You've lost your jobs. God have mercy. You've lost your whole life because of the well-favored hallowed of which, and, and I'm talking about this and then when we get to pray, don't you play games with this. Hallelujah. You need to 
fight for your future. Fight for your destiny. Just you came on the under the anointing of the living God and said, who is on my side? If you're on the Lord's side, then Jezebel has got to go. Hallelujah. If you're on the Lord's side, Jezebel cannot stay in our nation any longer. Jezebel has got to die. Somebody shout, Jezebel, die. My God, my God, my God. This devil has got to leave our homes. Amen. It's Some of you, 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 you've been, you've been in this nation for how long? You've, well, you, 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 even as I'm speaking right now, some of you come from work. As I'm preaching, you're tired. But when I look in your bank account, there is no money. And you think that's normal? Remember 10 years ago when you were crying for God to give your visa because of a better opportunity. This is a land flowing with milk and honey. But why don't you have the milk and the honey in the land? Oh, yeah, now you know what I'm talking about. Hallelujah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It doesn't matter where you are. You could be in Uganda. You could be in Rwanda. You could be in Africa. You could be in Australia. But as long as Jezebel is on you, Jezebel shall follow you. Look at how you're in America, but people in Africa are better than you. Because Jezebel, oh God. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. My God, my God, Jezebel has got to die. She sells our nations. Our nations have been given over to the devil. The Bible says Samaria have been given over unto sorcerers and witchcrafts. The Lord had to come down himself to go through Samaria. Remember the gospel according to St. John, chapter 4, verse number 3. The Lord had to go through another city. But the Bible says he came and stopped at a well. And they said, I, need, I must needs go through Samaria. I don't, I don't want to go through Samaria, but I have to go. <laughs> okay, he left Judea and departed again into Galilee. Verse number four, everybody. And he say, and, and he must, he did what? He must needs go through Samaria. Why does the Lord must needs go through Samaria? Because Samaria had been given over unto the devil in the days of, of Ahab when, when, when he built an altar for Baal and he built a temple for Baal and Samaria became the principality of, uh, excuse me, the headquarters just like you see Salem right now, Salem, Massachusetts it became the headquarters of all sorcerers where they gather from all over the different nations of the world and they come and converge in, in Salem, Massachusetts in the days of Ahab that was, that was Samaria so even Elijah in all his power Elijah could not open up Samaria Elisha got the double portion and in all the double portion he had he could not free Samaria God have mercy, no wonder Ben Herod came and besieged Samaria Samaria, because in you, the Israelites, their God does not dwell in Samaria because we drove him out of Samaria. You're all quiet, hallelujah. I wish I could preach this word the way I feel it. The Bible says, and the Lord says, I must need. I don't want to go through Samaria, but I have. There are things I want to do, but there are things I have to do. Hallelujah. Like some of you women, you don't have to have makeup, but you don't have to eat. There is a difference between a need and a want. A want is a luxury. But a need, if you don't get it, you die. So the Lord says, I must needs. Go through, if I don't go through Samaria, no prophet ever should, you will ever come down to open Samaria. No church will survive in Samaria. No business will survive in Samaria. So God comes off of his throne to come just to go through Samaria. So he can free Samaria. God. And God is walking through your household right now. I say the son of the living God is passing through your address. He's passing through your home. He's passing through Woburn, Massachusetts. The son of the most high God has come to pass here so we could open up Woburn again. So, so America can thrive in the ministry of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Somebody shout hallelujah. Come on, somebody shout hallelujah. Jezebel has got to die. Nations have been sold. People that will be having grandkids are still single now. Hallelujah. People that should be so far away are still barren now. People, oh God, have mercy. People that should be rich, they're still so broke, busted, and disgusted. They're still so poor with their poor selves. Amen. They ain't got no money. Why? Because witchcraft exchanges. Jezebel selleth families through our whoredoms and our witchcraft. And Jehu said, uh, Joram said, What is there? Is it peace, Jehu? Jehu said, What peace, God? What peace? So long as they are whole 
whoredoms of your mother Jezebel and her witchcraft are so many. Why peace if you've not taken care of the foundation of sorcery in your background? What, no matter how much you pray, no matter how, ma how much makeup you put on yourself, honey, nobody will find you until witchcraft has been broken. Pastor Bella can tell you, when Musala Bujengo used to come to the miracle nights initially, God have mercy. I'm not going to go there. Amen. But lo and behold, when she was delivered, the man had no choice. Sir. The man had no choice. Hallelujah. One time I felt sorry for the man, and I'm thinking the man is going to leave this girl because of the demons which are running out of her. Hallelujah. But she's free right now. She's a mother of a beautiful child. Hallelujah. Because she dealt with the foundation and the mistress and their harlot of witchcraft. Hallelujah. Some of you have got to go back and deal with that devil called Jezebel. If you never deal with it, Jezebel has got you mastered in the palm of, of her hands. She's controlling you, pushing a button. Now I need to control your money. Now I need to control your jobs. Now I need to control your marriage. I need to control your kids. Hallelujah. I need to control your nations. Hallelujah. And some of you, you had the opportunity to buy lands back in your countries. Hallelujah. And your lands, you, something somehow happened somehow somewhere. You think this is normal? This is not normal. This is a work of Jezebel. I, but when the blessing is on you, it, like when, when Jacob was anointed with the blessing of God, Laban tried to steal Jacob. But the following day, every morning, God kept on multiplying Jacob. He kept on increasing because the blessing of God was on Jacob. But when the curse is operating on somebody, even the little blessing you get keeps vanishing. The little plot of land you buy, somebody else comes and claims over it. There is a pastor so anointed, a pastor friend of mine, bought a land to build a church, hallelujah, in one of the cities in uh, Uganda, Kampala. Uh, uh, six months later, he finds out this was uh, uh, the false, a false transaction. It had already been sold to three people. How can a pastor fall into such a trap? Because something is still operating on you as one man of God. You may be anointed, but there are some things you need to ca take care of. Lazarus may be out of the grave, but he's still bound with... Thank you. He still has the residue of the grave. Let me, let me stop preaching. Everybody rise up to your feet. Because if I don't stop, I'm going to continue. Just rise up to your feet. We need to pray. We need to take care of this thing. Amen. We need to rebuke this thing and break it off for our lives. Hallelujah. We need to break this devil off of us in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah.